What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dance Anime. I fucked that up. Really? But we don't. Yeah, I fucked that up. <laughs> let's, do it, let's, do it, let's do it. And you have to be in the same position, too. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dance Anime. I'm your host, Kevin Sisenthone, aka Kev Senpai. And if you notice one thing, Kayla, not here. Left her in 2019. Dead to me. <laughs> Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to all of y'all. Happy holidays, I guess, too, right? Yeah. People get sensitive about that. But <laughs> we're going to have a fun episode because to my left, we got the Pokemon master himself, <laughs> Tyler Rodriguez. What's up? <laughs> and to my immediate left, the Bakugo to my Midoriya. The Ryuko to my Satsuki. That's pretty good, actually. The Vegeta to my Goku. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. My own blood, my younger brother, Steven Sissenthone. How's it going, guys? You ready for this episode? More ready than, uh, you? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it took forever to set this up. Right now, 11.30. We started trying to set up, like, what, like, 10? It took, like, an hour 30 to, like, do this. Yeah. Freaking ridiculous. We had a lot of technical difficulties, but we're here now. It's but, usually how it always is, though. Yeah. With these kind of things. But anyways, you guys you guys watch a lot of anime? Uh, in general or 2019? In general? 2019? Nope. I don't know. Nope. I don't. 2019, <laughs> I'll be honest, guys, I've probably watched only two animes. It's a shame. I know it's a shame. I'll be honest with you, just because I'm the puppet master to this whole thing, I barely watch that much, but I still have something to talk about. This guy over here, crazy. Mm-hmm. I've, I've binged a shit out of anime. <laughs> he knew he was about to be on the podcast, <laughs> and he went crazy with it. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> that's a good segue to what the hell have we been watching? Yes. <laughs> you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. So pretty much the first... Thing I want to talk about is that, I mean, we've all been watching that Carol on Tuesday, right? Oh yeah, hell yeah! Part two just came out uh, Christmas Eve. So I didn't watch. I only watched um, the first episode of part two, and it's just one of those things where, like, when I got into it, <laughs> it was such a like refreshing, like, oh yes, we're back again. Because when I finished part one, it was one of those things where, like, damn, I want more of this. Yeah. Like, so bad. Like, really, really bad. This is one of my favorite shows, like, just in general, but of the year. It was just such a big surprise to me. So, when it finished, I was like, damn, like, ah, oh, yeah. please. You know what I mean? For so, sure. now it's finally out. I didn't get a chance to, like, binge it because I had to do a lot of, like, editing and all that. But, did you guys, you guys watch more, right? I completed the shit. I watched <laughs> six episodes. And I do remember the first time you showed me this anime, and I was like, "What? what is this? A music anime? I yeah. was down, I'm into it, because I'm a dancer and stuff. I watched like the first episode, and I fell in love. Just, can I talk spoilers or anything? Yeah. Um, Try to keep it like spoiler first free. first episode for spoilers, kind of. <laughs> uh, Just like the bridge, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which one? That's one? Yeah. Alright, so the first episode on the bridge, and I, I know you kind of had a similar feeling, because I remember you texting us. Is uh you know when you hear uh Carol humming on the bridge and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. And it yeah. just like it just you know yeah, yeah. It, it just it resonates. I don't know if you guys know Joji, but like his, oh, yeah. his rhythm, oh my god! Like I literally got the same vibes. Like it, it's it's super sure. good. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, super good. Yeah, I mean you you watched the T Rod. You watched all of the um the whole thing, right? Oh, all of it, yeah. I couldn't, I so couldn't I guess, put it down. I mean, that's that's <laughs> crazy because I, I, you know, I've been rallying this Carol on Tuesday. You know, go watch it, go watch it, go watch mm -hmm. it. And here you come, like, out of nowhere just saying, oh, yeah, I finished it. You guys were on that subscribe to PewDiePie train. <laughs> <laughs> I remember telling uh, our friend Logan, I kept raging about the show, telling him, if you're, if you're a music fan, you have to watch it because it just makes such great music. And I remember after finishing the first season or the part one or whatever mm -hmm. I downloaded the album immediately and that's all I've been playing in my car for like the past month it's crazy yeah. 
If you're not gonna, you're gonna do it. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> but yeah, is there anything, I, I guess, is there anything that I would, am I looking, like, what am I looking forward to, I guess? Can you place the little breadcrumbs without spoiling anything? Is it hype? I would <laughs> say if if you had a character that you liked other than like the main characters that you felt would pair well with Mike um, with uh, Carolyn Tuesday mm-hmm. like feature wise just get like keep your hopes up because mm-hmm. it may happen okay may happen the collabs the hot collabs yeah, hot collabs yeah. that's what I want all I want don't say anything don't make a look don't make a face but I'm waiting for the Carolyn Tuesday feet Angela I'm not even gonna look at his face I'm not even looking the thing that sucks is I'm, I'm gonna watch this video I have to. I have to. But anyways. When you edit the video, just look at you. <laughs> look at us. Don't you look know at him. What? I'll even censor his face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll censor his face with my face. Just so you guys don't even get a hint. A oh, hint gonna, of what part two has got. You don't do me like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll switch our faces. How about that? Oh. We'll compromise. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, anything you guys want to talk about, Carol, on Tuesday? Just talk about how good it was or, like, you know, how it made you feel, I guess? I think it was just cool how, uh. They got real life, like, you know, singers and stuff you talked about mm-hmm. in the first episode. Oh, yeah, just English speakers. Yeah, and... but also they got, like, real, like, you no know, producers and, yeah. like, songwriters and stuff, which was cool. Uh-huh. And they and they had to. If you watch it, you're going to be like, this this was not yeah. some two-second show. Yeah. Like, they made song after song after mm-hmm. song. They made probably, like, two, three albums worth of songs. I mean, re- show. Re- I was say, really, it was just, like... Um, usually with like a show, right? You could just tell like the amount of effort and like the love and care that they put into it. Mm-hmm. You could tell they did not like yeah. just like let's do this as a cash grab. All right, on to the next one. It was like yeah. they took their time, they didn't their cut sweet, sweet at time. All. I mean, I mean, what do you expect from like specifically the director of literally Cowboy Bebop mm-hmm. and like Samurai Champloo? Like, yeah, I mean, what do you what do you expect, right? Right. But just the amount of like care that went into this, it's. I mean, it just shows. I mean, some of these songs sound like like top hits, like on yeah. the charts, like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. If people heard it, they wouldn't even know it's from an anime. You know what I mean, yeah, it sounds like it's from the radio and stuff. So it's really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we've been memeing the the heck out of some lyrics in the mm-hmm. in these. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say. Yeah, yeah I was like, that, that, <laughs> that's a can of worms. <laughs> but um, I mean, All yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean i mean anything you guys want to say before i move on to my next one oh god yeah you have been watching yeah, we're good. all right so yeah, yeah. i mean i mean we've been on that pokemon train <laughs> or at least two out of three of yeah, us yeah. you would just you've been doing been you. laying low you've been laying low but me and tyler we pokemon sword and shield obsessed with it Oh yeah, and just because of that, I just been I've been on a Pokemon binge. I've been I love Nessa, and Nessa's my background. Like, <laughs> come on now, and like, I've just been obsessed with Pokemon ever since Sword Sword and Shield came out. So naturally, I'm I'm scrolling through the Netflix, and I see Pokemon. I choose you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pokemon I choose. Wait a minute. <laughs> Pokemon the movie I choose you. And uh did you guys see this at all or like see anything about this? No. Um this was one of the coolest movies um that I have seen in a while like in terms of Pokemon like specifically content show too. Um it's new? This is uh, I think about a year, two years old or something like that. You hear about this? I heard about um the friends one uh <laughs> the one with the friends. <laughs> the one with the friends. The one with the friends. Yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, I I put it on right, mm-hmm. and from I mean from what I know, right, I'm going into this movie with the the expectation that it is a retelling of the first episode, right? Ash goes see gets Pikachu. Pikachu's a, a dickhead. <laughs> They become friends. Yeah. Pikachu's not a dickhead anymore. <laughs> the end, right? He's never a dickhead. <laughs> and Damn I'm like, and as, it, and, as, and as it's going, I'm like, uh, 
how are they going to elongate this episode into an hour and a half of of movie? Hmm. And then it turns out I was completely wrong because they go through all that within uh, maybe 20 minutes or something like that, maybe less. Hmm. And then, no, it flips it flips my expectations like on my head and it's a retelling of like the whole like um what was it Jodo? Yeah, first season of Was that Jodo? Yeah, yeah. It's so it's a retelling of that whole wow. thing. Like mm. but but there's a big but it takes place in the alternate universe. Wait, what? Yeah. Is that mean? Isn't that crazy? Like no like no Clefairy? <laughs> it takes place in an alternate universe. Expl- what, is it, what does that mean? It's crazy, right? I got your I got your attention now. <laughs> so, this is what happens after um, you know the first episode. You know, Pikachu, why'd you save me? Because we're gonna be best friends, right? Yeah. And then the end, they see the ho ho in the sky. Yeah. And that's the end of the first original yep. first episode. So it does that, and all of a sudden, montage. Montage. It's a montage of Ash getting his badges. And he's going through, and you're like, "Oh shit!" He shakes hands with I th- with what I think is Brock, and he goes on his merry way, and like he gets his first couple badges. So that means he had to go to like Cerulean City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he got his water badge. Yep. On his merry way, there's no Misty, no Brock. Nothing. Oh. He is by himself with a Pikachu and his Pokemon. I'm not sure if this is like the manga, but that's why I thought too. I was like, well, manga had a fairy. I was wondering like. <laughs> If this was like, is this just like an adaptation of like the manga or something? But I was like, whatever. So, anyways, he's going through all of these moments within the show just by himself, hmm. him and his Pokemon. And I'm like, this is like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> now, at first, I was like, oh, like you would think, like, oh, like there's no um, Misty, no Brock, like this, this is ass, right? No, I think it sounds interesting. Actually. Ass ketchup. <laughs> ass ketchup. This is ass ketchup. That's it. <laughs> that is it. And and no, I didn't get that feeling at all. It was it was more like I've spent time with Misty and yeah. Brock for all my life, right? That it didn't really matter. It felt like refreshing. Yeah. To experience this almost again, hmm. but in a fresh way. So. He does that, and it it's this weird. I don't know. Then this is where it starts getting a little bit messy, because then it's it hits. I don't know. I don't want to like spoil the movie too much because there is a lot of new elements that take place, and um, it's kind of like it, it tries to. You know what the movie kind of is? It's kind of like a love letter to like that whole original series. That's kind of what it is. It's a love letter to that whole original series, and it tries to hit all the moments that you could remember. So, like, if you think of one random yeah. moment, like, memeable moment in mm-hmm. that, like, first series, mm-hmm. it's probably in there. So, like, you have, like, moments like the Butterfree moment. You have moments like, uh, like Charmander, like, mm-hmm. dying in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, so I have a question. All right, yeah, so... Yeah. Did it go over the fight uh the HM badge with Giovanni? It, it doesn't go that far until like Giovanni. Go that far? Okay. Yeah. But it does uh, Oh, I remember that. That was epic as shit. Yeah. But um No, it it goes into it just tries to get all the moments that like you kind that were super memorable and those are like just the two moments I could really think. But this is where I think the movie kind of suffers where um so like the Butterfree moment, yeah, right? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I was so, like, so like the Bye Bye Butterfree episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what happens to Butterfree. <laughs> it is like, um, it doesn't hit as hard. Interesting. And the reason why is because you have so many episodes where like in the original series where Ash catches Pikachu. Or not Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Ash catches fucking Cat- Caterpie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> catches Caterpie. And then you see it evolve into a Metapod. He has the Harden battle. <laughs> and then, like, eventually to a Butterfree. And then eventually you get to the Bye Bye Butterfree. But this is condensed into, like, literally 30 minutes. That's that's weird because if you watch the the 
show as a kid, you know that he fought with Butterfree on the SS Anne uh, against some dude with Eradicate. Is that is that like the Titanic episode? Exactly, the Titanic episode. <laughs> <laughs> where like, where like the James gets under. like, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a magic card. I don't think, that yeah. wasn't in the movie, so. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty weird to like skip all that. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it's because of like the nature of like the movie and the messy pacing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, it's, it loses its like feeling and depth a little bit. I don't know that. I mean, I guess just speaking, if like if you've watched Pokemon, like your whole life, you grew up with it, it might not hit as hard, but it's still nonetheless a really cool movie. And I do suggest that you watch it if you are a huge pu- Pokemon, Peter Pie fan, Pokemon fan. Um, in Japanese, they call it Pocket Mon. Mm. Pocket Monsters. Pocket Mon. Yeah, but yeah. It, no, it was such a cool movie, and I think you guys should definitely check it out. How long is it? It's like an hour. 20 minutes yeah, or 30. Like, all, like 2019 yeah. updated anime. Oh, th- I think that was the graphics, that was yeah. like the hypest thing was getting to see the moments that I remember. Oh, that's cool. In full HD and yeah. oh my god, let me tell let me tell you about like the animation. The animation is top tier. Nice. Top tier. Do you know who uh, made it? Um, no. Nah, I have no idea. But shout out to you. Yeah, yeah. shout out shout out to that studio, but <laughs> I, I know I do know that the director is the same dude that like directed all the original Pokemon movies so like your Pokemon cool. Pokemon the first movie mm. and so has forth. that soul then mm-hmm. yeah so that that was like such a really that was such a it was it wasn't the best movie but it was the most satisfying movie to watch once the credits hit mm. and when the credits hit it left you in feels because of just like what happens and like the way spoilers. <sighs> <laughs> the the way the way that like just the way it ends it leaves you with like a damn I I love Pokemon oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah 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 it, yeah it that's what I mean like I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier this movie is a it's a love letter it's mm-hmm. a love letter to the old millennial Pokemon fans that grew up watching this in this original series but mm-hmm. still makes it fresh enough that you should check it out you know what I mean okay yeah so it doesn't feel like fan servicey to like no. The OG Pokemon people now. I mean, I, I mean a little bit, a little bit, just because they tried. That's that's where I'm like, you failed, you failed, Pokemon. <laughs> this is where, um, because <clears throat> moments like you know they were trying to do a cheap shot with the bye bye Butterfree, mm. <laughs> but it just didn't work. It didn't work because yeah. like it was condensed in like 30 minutes. Yeah, you didn't have. Yeah, imagine like the little kid seeing that for the first time. Like, how am I supposed to get attached to Butterfree? You know, yeah, mm-hmm. like true. Because think, no, think about how long it took for like this Caterpie. First of all, like one of the first Pokemon he caught, right? Mm-hmm. And to be friends with it for X amount of episodes until the Bye Bye Butterfree episode. So once in this movie, in this movie, it takes twenty minutes, and you barely, you don't even have that relationship. It's pretty much cut out. Yeah. So it didn't, it didn't hit. So it didn't. It didn't really hit. So that was that was a little bit like upsetting, but and then there's like I mean they try to squeeze a lot a lot this I, I feel like this movie should have been like two parts like two hours maybe because then they try to like squeeze like all the legendaries in it because there's oh, just like man. all of a sudden there's people trying to like hunt Ho Oh down and like <laughs> and then there's people trying to hunt like like Entei and like the the dogs oh god and I'm just like what what is going on the pacing is like really weird. But I guess other other than that, the movie's really good. Cool. And it's it's just super satisfying to watch. It's definitely one of those movies where you watch and you're like, damn, I'm old. And this reminds me of my childhood and I love it. But yeah, that, I'll that's, check it out. Definitely <laughs> definitely check it out. If you guys love Pokemon, definitely check it out. Netflix. Netflix, uh, yeah. Sponsor us. Imagine. <laughs> Get the Netflix sponsor? Yeah, imagine. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um do you guys have any shows you want to talk about? I want to eat your pancreas. You you saw that? Hell yes, I saw Damn, that. we wanted to see that. Tell them the tell them the story <clears throat> right God now. Damn it. Um, so he, here's here's a story about. I want to eat your pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> tell them the story. This, it's like embarrassing. Like I hate it. It's alright. <clears throat> but I wanted to eat my pancreas. <laughs> I, I wanted to eat my pancreas after that. It was fucking 
Oh, but that was funny. I was talking to Logan about the the movie. He hasn't seen it either, but he was telling me a story about how his lupus attacked his pancreas, and I was just like, "Oh, you thought about oh, that? <laughs> oh, poor dude." Yeah. But um, that, that, do you know the story of uh of how how, how we were trying she, to watch it? Uh, Kayla told me like a little bit how you got lost. That's about it. Okay, so I want to eat your pancreas. I get tickets. I buy, and the thing is, I buy tickets for everyone. This is like, we have to go watch this. This is a movie I've been like waiting to watch for like, you know, a long, long time. So I buy tickets for me. I get a ticket for Kayla. I get a ticket for Steven. <clears throat> and we're hyped. We are hyped. We got the best seats in the house. And it's like, <sighs> I don't. I don't remember. Was it a bow tie that we had to go to? I don't know. Mark, not marquee. I don't know. Uh, so, whatever. It's a theater. We'll call it bow tie for now. <laughs> um. So. Naturally, we wake up super early because this is airing. What like, ten a.m. or something like that, um, and. We so get up. We get up early and we drive to this bow tie I have like the address put in and everything and we have to drive like a literal like hour or so or more oh you must have went to Danbury I can't remember it was it was probably like an hour like an hour drive just about and we go there we scan our tickets and it's not scanning we scan again not scanning the movie is in 10 minutes we scan again not scanning manager is coming 5 minutes till the movie and they're talking and they're talking and we're like, and we're antsy. We're like, we, we want to go watch our movie. What is going on? And pretty much the manager says, you're at the wrong theater. <laughs> <laughs> and my, <laughs> and, and I'm like, no, like that, yeah. like that was such a like, fuck. That like was a punch in the pancreas for it sure. Was a, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. It was, it was everything to the pancreas. It sucked. And I think the worst part was was that the theater that we had to go to was like <laughs> Dude. it was it was more than an hour it away from this theater. Far. We went the opposite direction, so we didn't end up watching it. So that was the thing. Yeah. Anyways, I want to yeah. eat your pancreas. <laughs> if you watched it, you'd be sitting here praising it like I would. Yeah, probably. Go for yeah, it. But now I, I can't. I can't talk about it because I would spoil it too much. I mean, if you want to know a synopsis of it, it's um, it's these two school kids in the same class and. Uh, their relationship is that they didn't have a relationship bet- before they met in the hospital, and it goes from there. Hmm. Um. I mean, was it? Is it as sad as like the trailer makes it? Slash, like I would say it's really <clears throat> well written because it it tells you what's gonna happen, but it's just it's inevitable and like. The characters go through it as if it's another day in their lives, but obviously they're doing things different every day. This probably doesn't make sense, but <laughs> <laughs> like it's just uh, it's just really well written. And like, you gotta see it. Just go away, take a shot, come back, watch this episode. It'll make sense. <laughs> it'll I mean, make. He tried to not spoil it. So yeah, no, yeah. yeah, you gotta appreciate that. I mean, that's the. That's like what's so hard about this show. Yeah, yeah. It's like and I think the thing that sucks is that anime is like I feel like spoiler territory is a little bit more like like you have to be extra strict because there's yeah. so many and some some people haven't watched like Cowboy Bebop and it's like but that's like a 20 plus year old show and it's like do we spoil that? What are the ground rules for that? I don't know. Look, I made a pact before I came here. I said, I'm not spoiling anything for anybody because I spoiled way too many animes for Kevin already. Imagine. <laughs> Im- imagine. Imagine you get your Lion April spoiled for you and then go see it. It ain't going to hit different. <laughs> I'm so happy I watched that before that happened. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I can't even be mad. It was one of those things that... Your Lion April is one of those shows I hyped up, hyped up, hyped up. When it comes out, I'm like, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, years down the line later, like, we're in, like, a PlayStation, like, group chat or something like that. What is it called? Party? I'm too old for this. 
PlayStation Party? I can't remember. I yeah, think we were in the I car. Think was, I think it was. Yeah, no, it was, it was in, the in the car. I think we were in the car, and I was like, "Yo, <laughs> oh really?" Yeah. I was like, and, "But anyways, like they're just talking about it, and all of a sudden, boom, ending of your line, April." <laughs> like it was, it was a joke too. Like it was like one of those too soon, <laughs> and then too soon jokes, and, and I, it, it was bad. And it was just one of those things. So yeah, I know the ending of your line, April, and I haven't watched it. I'm better than you. <laughs> 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 but um I mean yeah, dude any any other other things you need to talk about? Uh you guys want to talk about Promain? Oh, Promare. Promare, Promare, sorry. Um, I haven't seen it. Oh my god. Where do we begin? Without spoiling anything, I, I could go on and on. Yeah. I mean I already talked about yeah, it. Yeah, you did, you did. But I, I know you wanted to say some stuff. So uh I don't know. I, I feel like we've talked about everything. I mean this is just your your PSA to go watch Premiere. <laughs> if we're not gonna talk, I'm like, here's yeah, your PSA. Yeah, yeah. Go watch Premiere if when you ever you get the chance. It is so good, and we were. Um, it was one of those things where um, Tyler he didn't go, he didn't watch it yet, and all of a sudden Stephen um, was he just said Premiere like, oh, we have to watch Premiere, and we're talking yeah. about it, and just like, I just got chills just hearing that name. There's just so much baggage tied to that name now yeah <laughs> for me even if you listen to the soundtrack it yeah. just it hits uh, how do you yeah i know what does she it's one of like <laughs> jam my head through a lot to get you hyped you know what i mean well, just leo fotia's theme oh my yeah. god he's so if you're a fan of like any of those shows you said it last episode yeah like the kill it kills the gurns all that yeah you definitely have to watch it because watching watching this movie there's some scenes like even fighting scenes i'm getting emotional it's a fighting scene. Why am I getting emotional? It should be hyped. But I'm like, I'm like ready to like shed a tear because I'm like, I'm seeing things that I've seen before and it's just like, you know what I mean? It's a nostalgic, nostalgic feeling. It's weird. It's it's just like, I mean, I already said like, this dude, he just knows how to go through this. He knows how to make epic scale battles and epic scale, just everything from the visuals to the music to yeah. the, and it's weird because you're watching this and it's so euphoric. It literally, that's what it is. It's so euphoric that like you want to like literally cry. You feel this pit in your stomach. Yeah. Like a fire in your soul. You know what I mean? And it's like, it makes you want to like act. It makes you want to do something. It really does. And it's, it's just unreal. This movie. I'm sorry if you don't like it and you're just like, you know, yeah, f- fuck this dude. <laughs> There's one guy out there. Like, oh shit, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm sure. I mean, there's so many Promare fans. Like, yeah, y- you guys got my back. That's good. <laughs> it really is. Imagine someone watching that movie and at that end going, "Oh, that sucked." I can't. I can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, go watch Promare if you haven't. I mean, I don't know when's the next chance you get. Maybe the Blu-ray comes out. Unless they have another screening. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. But until then, just listen to Leo Fotia's theme. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about? What else um, you been watching? I think it's a good segue. I think it actually premieres a good segue into like the whole uh, anime awards. Because, I mean, how could it not be in, you know, at least mm-hmm. anime movie of the years, you know? I mean... Not yet, not yet. Let's get into news. Uh, my, let's, let's talk about the news first. But, you know, it is a segue into the first news article that we have. Okay. okay. But before that, it's time for the news with Kayla Dennis. <laughs> Here we go. Except she's dead to me, and and we left her in 2019, so it's the news with uh, Tyler and Steven. All I want to do is get into the news with Tyler and Steven, with Tyler and Steven. All I want to be is someone who gets to read the news with Tyler and Steven. All right. Kayla sucks. <laughs> yeah, fuck Kayla. <laughs> so, the first article is Promare English Dub in Japan. Have you heard about this? Nope. This is huge, by the way. I don't know how often this happens, but pretty much in a nutshell, um, the English premiere of the English premiere. <laughs> God damn it. The, the English, English premiere, premiere of Promare 
was in Japan. Wow. I think I don't know if that was like the first time ever. Uh, like for English for like, English dub. Was that the last time it's done or like the when what? was the last time it was done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, like, has this ever even been done? Like, I have I no idea. Know. So, for, so, all right. From Anime News Network, Alex Mateo. Premier anime film screens with English dub, English subtitles in Japan. The official website for Trigger and X Flag's original anime film, Premier, announced on Tuesday that the film will be again playing with an English dub and with English subtitles in Japanese theaters on December 20th. The film will have screenings in three more versions, just the English dub, the English dub with Japanese subtitles, original Japanese soundtrack, and English subtitles, and yada, yada, yada. Um, Fathom Events screened the film in the U.S. on September 17th and 19th. G G Kids began screening the movie in the U.S. on September 20th in select theaters and in Canada on September 22nd. Whatever. Let's talk about that, though. English dub? Weird. English dub in Japan? Us. Is Japan dubs? <laughs> Versus subs? Yeah, you know what I mean? That's weird to think about. Yeah. I mean, what? Like, what? You know what's even weirder is that T House could take Nova to Japan <laughs> <laughs> to watch his movie. He could. <laughs> but, anyways, um, it's that this is this is huge. Like, yeah. I don't know, like, if they've ever done this before or like how they feel about that or like why this even happened yeah where i don't know it was, it was a weird article when i read it and i was like what would people would japanese people even prefer to watch dub over sub? i want i don't know because there's such a it's such a different culture over in japan yeah. where like anime they love their anime so i don't know how they feel about um because especially over here right when like people here that watch like subs right they they pay attention to the Japanese voice actors. Yeah. I don't know how Japanese people feel about the way English voiceovers are done over here and if they even keep up with that. Um, I know sometimes, like, the English voice actors and Japanese voice actors, they, like, they kind of, like, hey, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I know, like, um, I think there was a thing where, like, Sean Schemmel, um, the voice of Goku... Like, and the other voice actress over in Japan, like, they met up and took a picture together, and they were like, oh, what's going on, Goku, Goku? That's weird. So that was, like, really cool. Um, They obviously respect each other. Um, But, yeah, for Premiere to have this English dub play in Japan? It deserves it. It deserves it. No, the English dub was so good. We went to go watch English dubbed. Mm Mm-hmm. I watched dub, too. I watch it. I watch it in Italian. <laughs> Italian. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. I was like, I was trying to think of like Italian, but I'm like, I don't even know Italian. I even take Italian. Galarmi. <laughs> Leo Galarmi. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was it. Was interesting. Interesting article because uh, I I don't know. I mean. It, maybe it's affected by like, um, cause the one the one thing they like in Japan, right, is uh they like their Disney. Mm. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, they, they like love Frozen, remember? Right? Yeah. So I guess for for a reference, I was reading another article the other day, um, and there was the new loop in the third movie, and that actually opened up number two at the box office. What do you think number one was? From here. I mean, I don't know. Number one was Frozen 2. Oh, mm-hmm. we're talking about Disney, of course. Yeah. <laughs> number Yeah, number one was Frozen 2. They love their Disney. I was thinking 2 anime. Yeah. Mm. I wonder if Kingdom Hearts had a, like, had a share in that. Mm. I don't know. Makes you wonder. Yeah. But. Of course. Of course, Frozen 2. They love that. Yeah. Have you seen it? I want to watch it so goddamn bad. We gotta go to Japan now. <laughs> watch it, watch it over there. Just to watch it, watch it in Japanese subs <laughs> and the war. But um, yeah, that was a little cool article. So, want to talk about this next one? I feel like this is gonna get us like hyped. This is gonna get us pretty mad. Mad? You said hyped, then mad. <laughs> like that hyped mad. Okay. All right. 
uh, because I when I was reading this, I was just like, you fucking scumbags. <laughs> like, you fucking scumbags. Like, what are you doing? Okay, let's hear it. And, all right, this article is, is there an art, or an art author? All right, okay, I see it. This is from crunchyrule.com. This is Daryl Harding. He says, Terror Studio Anime Studio head disappears, leaves animators unpaid and Fragtime OVA website in the dust. Damn. So, on December 9th, freelance anime industry veteran animator Gen Sato tweeted out that he hadn't yet got gotten paid from an anime studio that was producing theatrical anime. That anime studio was Terror Studio, which recently put out the OVA Fragtime, which was real which was released theatrically on November 22nd. Terror Studio also produced anime... Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Sato's tweet, being an industry veteran, gained a lot of exposure with many other animators who worked on projects at Terror Studio, replying to his tweet saying they also haven't been paid for the October invoices and weren't unable to contact the studio. It's common in Japan to get paid the next month for your work. If Sato and the other animators invoiced at the end of October, they would have been paid at the end of November. Um, one of the animators, Mazaki K, responded saying that they'd, they'd been paid by the production studio for commission work earlier this year, but not for their latest work, being the one that yeah. no one's being paid for. And uh, let's see. There's just so much interesting shit in this article. I'm trying not to like go too long. The official website for Fragtime posted an update about the ongoing online remarks about the studio on December 10th. They said in the statement that for some time they've been seeking information from Next Batter Circle Co. Uh, in order to understand the situation, but have been unable to get in contact with the company. They went on to say that they'll keep trying to get in contact with representatives um, to get the exact information about the situation. On December 9th, it was found that Terra Studios' website went down, and their Twitter page had been deleted. Scumbags! The freaking what is going on? What is going on? Um, later on December 10th, the website for the studio was back up, with no information on why it went down or why the Twitter page was still down. And the, the article ends saying that there's no comment from the studio, um, Next Batter Circle Co., or Junkato as of yet, with no one seem, seemingly able to get in contact with them. I mean, how the fuck do you feel about that? What the hell? Pay these people. I mean, I've gone a month without getting paid. And if it sucks, for damn sure. And if you don't get paid for a month, like say you miss like four paychecks, you can technically sue whoever your employer is for your money. Uh, I, th I know here in the U.S., but over there, I'm not sure. Like those are different laws. But goddamn, that that's a whole month of labor that they just got for free, and they just see you. How long has this been going on? Um, this happened. I mean, the article was written like around early December, and the article <laughs> wasn't updated yet. I haven't heard of anything yet. Imagine if, if they just haven't gotten paid. For they were supposed time. they were supposed to be paid. The articles in November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's January. Mm -hmm. it was the last decade they didn't get paid. <laughs> yeah, it's been a whole year. <laughs> no, yeah, but like. It, <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, I don't know if you know the conditions of, like, animators. They're yeah. shitty. Yeah, it's rough. Like, yeah. over time, people are, over time. Yeah, it's literally, like, like um, crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah. Like, to the point where, the like, the animators literally get ill. And not only that, they get paid shit. <laughs> Compared to, like, other, you know, gears within how to make an anime, right? Which... Which blows my mind in the first place because like there's little scenes like uh, I just think about beautiful scenes like think about like um, I'm gonna just say you guys know what I'm talking about and if you guys watch Attack on Titan season three um, Just the Levi scene. Oh, baby. The Levi scene. Yeah. Think about how beautiful that is how intricate how in-depth it is and like imagine someone like that working on that and imagine the the studio just being like there's go dark and you don't get paid for that got ghosted that sucks that's bad that is not good um i don't know i don't know they should sue i mean there's <laughs> got to be <laughs> they should sue they got, sure that's why it's an article because they did i mean there's got to be some 
some bad shit going on, right? Yeah. Somewhere along along the lines. It was like, what could it be? It's so weird. It's just like delete everything and just completely lose and contact. Not, not even talk to him. Not even tell him <laughs> like like hey like we're a little bit late on your payment. Like, what is going on? Ghost. I feel bad for those people. I mean, yeah. what are they doing? I don't know. It's like being. Um, I mean, this goes for anything, but like especially if like because I'm me being an actor, right? Usually. Sometimes you you got to do like free work here and then, but usually like I would say now that at the point where I'm at now in my acting career, usually it's like if you're putting a product out there that's professional and, you know, polished and just requires great talent, like don't work for free. Yeah. Do not work for free um, and take nothing less. You're better than that. That's like the mentality. So I couldn't even imagine these talented workers um, doing, you know, th- especially this type of job from what we just said, they get paid shit. Um, conditions are pretty bad to the point where like some of them get ill and just like, boom, no payment. You know what shows they've made? The studio? Uh, it's, it's somewhere in an article. I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, but... I mean, luckily it wasn't something like a madhouse or something like that. Yeah, if it was like a big studio. Yeah, it was like a, like a popular one. Yeah. Like, imagine like the word, like madhouse, like, so like, you're like one punch man, and like, you'd not get paid for one punch man. Like, yeah. <laughs> that'd be crazy. But I don't know. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully those workers get paid for what they did, if they hadn't already. I haven't seen any article saying that they did. Um and I feel like that would have popped up by now. But for now, you know, I hope they get paid and that, that shit sucks. I just, oh, there's nothing, nothing like the feeling of take, getting taken advantage of, you know? Yeah. Not a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I will say no. Imagine them working again, though. You know how weird they would feel? You know what I mean? I. They would feel like. Do they put all their effort in, or like, do they even want to do this yeah. in this industry anymore? Or? I mean, yeah. if it if it were me, like, depending on how bad it gets, it's like, I'm not working with you again. Yeah, like I am a hundred percent not working with you again. It was super unprofessional. Madhouse, where you at? You know what I mean? <laughs> Bro, that's such a deterrent for anyone who wants to be an animator. Too. Yeah, like you've seen anime characters literally be scarred for life or less. Mm-hmm. Like, it's demoralizing for yeah. sure. Now, I guess, yeah. You want to get into the next news article? Yeah. Really, why not? That shit sucks, but... Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know you know what's another thing that sucks? Not for us. Not for anyone else. But one guy. Actually, you know what? You had a news article, right? Yeah, I did. I wanted to see... Because I remember I was like... You told me that you had a news article to bring up, and I was like, oh, shit. Usually, it's not about a guy. It's not about a guy? No, nah, so you're good. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um... <laughs> uh... Yeah, I wanted to see if, like, um, we had the same idea mm-hmm. of, like, news articles and was wondering if he, like, brought it up. Go for it. All right, but I'll go to this. Because this, this one's actually a pretty big. Any guesses? I have no idea. Yeah, it could be any. Sucks for him, and it's a guy. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know Japanese news either. All right, here we go. Gainax president Maki Tomohiro arrested... <laughs> on semi force indecent assault charges. Yeesh. Guy next president? Yeah. On December 5th, all right, this, this is from Daryl Harding from Crunchyroll. Um, on December 5th, the current president of the Tokyo based Guy next, Maki Tomohiro, was arrested by the Tokyo Metropolitan Police on semi forced indecent assault charges against a woman in her late teens. Tomohiro had only recent become the president of animation company Gainax in October after being a managing director at the company since 2015 according to his LinkedIn page Gainax is famous for producing hit animes yeah Evangelion Grand Lagon Daikon 3 and 4 um let's see Mainichi reports that four alleged incidents occurred between February 6th and and 23rd 2019 four, four. <laughs> Wait, does it say what kind of assault? Just like regular assault? There, there's actually some some shit in here. Um, okay, 
Tomohiro is alleged to have brought a female student from a voice acting school he was president of at the time into an apartment and took naked photos of her upper body at least four times. The apartment was contracted by the voice acting school to be a woman's dormitory for students. It is alleged that he told her that this was photo training to become an entertainer. Jesus Christ. During the photo shoot, it is alleged that he also touched her legs, telling her afterwards because her legs were swollen, it was good to massage them. Bro, this sounds like a joke. I can't take this seriously. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like an anime, dude. <laughs> this really sounds like an anime, like like some That's fucked awful. up. So, Tomohiro denies the charges when questioned by police saying that the facts are different. I was asked to take the photos. At the time, Tomohiro was the president of Gainax International, a voice acting school in the Dachi Ward, who had contracts with multiple women to train them to become voice actors, including the one he allegedly took photos of. <sighs> Scumbags. I know. They're everywhere in every industry. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Consent is key. Mm-hmm. Don't touch people that don't want to be touched. And don't coerce people into taking naked photos of them, saying yeah. that this is part of your training. <laughs> Photo training? What does that even mean? I guess, I think what he means is that, like, like, be, like once you make it as a voice actress, like, people will take photos of you. So, like, let me take some photos of you naked, because that makes sense. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And, like, I don't know, you assume, like, I, I mean, being, like, a young up and comer like woman, right? Yeah. With this dude as your boss is like a Weinstein, right? Mm-hmm. If you say no, like this dude just drop kicks your ass off the cliff. On to the next one. Let me touch your swollen legs. That's that's so bad. So, any thoughts on that? Besides just being flabbergasted, I guess. Yeah, stop. Stop being scumbags. It's easy. <laughs> just be a good person. Um so, I mean, yeah, there, there's not much to say besides stop being a scumbag. Don't touch people that don't want to be touched. Consent is key. Um, and treat human beings like human beings. Yeah. Enough said. Um, but there's actually a follow-up article to this. Oh, God. It's nothing bad. Okay. It's actually, like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay. I, I think it's funny. It's, um. Okay, this is Daryl Harding from Crunchyroll again. Um, anime studios Kara, Gainax Kyoto, and Gaina respond to arrest of Gainax president Maki Tomohiro. So this is this is all these studios' responses that are like linked to Gainax. Mm-hmm. Um, so it goes to Studio Kara. Studio Kara posted a statement on their website about the incident, responding not only to the news but the use of Evangelion as a headline in Japanese media <laughs> in regards to Gainax works. While Gainax in the 1990s under the direction of Hideaki Anno created Neon Genesis Evangelion, all the staff from that series, as well as any that remain for Gurren Lagann, have moved on to other anime studios or have become freelancers. Kara asked the media to stop using Evangelion in headlines about the criminal case involving Maki Tamahiro. Yeah. And then it says, Kara went on to say that the studio, any step... Kara went on to say that the studio, any staff, staff at the studio, and none of the current works in production are affiliated or in affiliation with the suspect. The release schedule of Evangelion will not be affected by this news. Kara also said that the money they loaned Gainax is still outstanding. Kara ended the statement wishing the best for the victim and pray that they recover from the damages as soon as possible. So this is Gaina. Gaina, which was formerly Gainax Fukushima, Explain in a statement on the on their website that they are not affiliated with Gainax. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? After being bought out by Kinoshita Group, when they were bought out, the studio changed its name to Gaina and opened up a studio in Tokyo to produce anime. They will not be ans- answering any questions about the incident and hope that they can have fans continue to support. Gainax Kyoto <laughs> posted a tweet from the managing director of the studio, Yasuhiro Takeda, who was an original co-founder of Gainax after Daikon 3, explaining that both companies are completely separate and there is no no capital relationship 
between the studios. <laughs> <laughs> this this is fucking this is funny. Cutting ties. This, this is so fucking funny because this is like everyone like that had like their best friend and then they figure out like he's a creep and they're like oh they're like the who's he? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, me they're, a silent voice. Have you ever seen a silent voice? It reminds me just of that. Yeah, they're cutting off, but like <laughs> except that dude didn't creep on girls. <laughs> but it's, this is so funny that like I think my favorite thing about like scandals and businesses is that literally is like something bad happens and like we don't know him. Yeah. 2020 that's, vision. That's the funniest. <laughs> but no, that's the funniest thing to me because it's literally like, um, I mean, I guess that, I mean, that's just the company like Meta to do, right? Yeah. It's, it's literally just cut them off. We have no ties. We don't know. You them. said they changed their name? Who? You said one of the companies changed their name? No. No? no? It was, uh, I, heard, I thought I said, I heard that. No, it was, uh, because a lot of the companies are like guy next this, guy next mm-hmm. that, but they're not. Affiliated, I guess, mm. with the with the like just guy next. Um, let's see if there's any. No, that's it. But yeah, the, I thought it was super funny because um, just them being like, nah, you don't know, like stop using Evangelion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that that was their responses and all that. Just too much. Any last words? <laughs> I want to call it extra, but I mean, it hasn't happened to us. <laughs> I mean, that all makes sense. Cut ties. Stop using. Stop using this for that because it's bad. I was like, I don't know if they. I mean, I'm trying to think if they appointed a new president yet, mm. or anything like that. But I don't know. Do you? I guess with that, um, I did see a lot of comments underneath the article. Do you think Gainax is finished? Because a lot of people did say that. Huh. I was about to say, if they change their name, maybe. Maybe. I mean, it, honestly, if they make a banger anime, I feel people are going to watch it. And they're not going to know about this. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Not like, at least uh, the dedicated people will, but not like the casual anime fans. If they hear this new show come up by them, they're not going to know. I mean, as long as it's like really, really good, right? Yeah. They're not going to know. And plus, I, I would feel bad for the uh, the people working on the show, the animating and stuff, just because their president did something. Yeah. And they put a lot of work into it. So <laughs> I would hope not. But at the same time, it's like, dude, run your company right. <laughs> Stop doing this weird stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, I personally think, like, I don't know. It, you're, it's, it's never over till it's over type mentality, I guess. Yeah. Um. Obviously, this is super bad and super unprofessional and you can see where that led everyone is literally like I don't know you um but to be fair I don't know like when's the last thing you knew that Gainax animated <laughs> I don't know either yeah I don't know I have no idea I'm a Trigger fanboy now that's the new Gainax Trigger Trigger Studio Trigger is just the new guy next, literally. Premiere. Premiere. Kill a Kill. Little Witch Academia. Banger shows. Just just go to Trigger. Just watch Trigger shows. <laughs> Honestly. As long as uh Guy and Max pays their people, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh You can pull up your article now though. Oh, you guys are gonna get a kick out of this. It's about a, a cosplayer. I mean you guys might know oh her, God. but it's a Japanese cosplayer. I have no idea. But I think the article header is funny. Listen to this. It's by, uh, I'm going to butcher this, Sukbir Chima from Mashable.com, January 2nd, 2020. Okay. It says, the headline is, this Japanese cosplayer is so popular, she has a phenomenon named after her. And this is ridiculous. And maybe you can pull up a picture, like here or something. Yeah. But pretty much, I'm not going to read it. There's... An event that happened where this cosplayer stood in like this, it looks like a desert, right? She's staying in the middle, and it's literally like the first episode of Spongebob where there's like a bunch of fish around the Krusty Krab, <laughs> and they're all taking pictures of her and freaking out, and it looks ridiculous. Look at this. It literally looks like it. It literally looks like uh, Spongebob. You see that? Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I saw this, I'm like, who is this person? That's not Anako Oh my ring. god, she has a phenomenon. It's called the Anako Ring. The Anako Ring? (laughs) 
th- yeah, thousands gather to take photos of the anime-like person and has been dubbed the Inaka Ring. That looks epic. That was sometimes like it's also called the Inaka Wall. And to be fair, she is a she she plays the part well. She looks like an anime character. Who's she cosplaying as? Do you know? Oh, she's from Sword Art. Um, it says right there. I don't want to butcher it. Yeah, there C-Known? it is. Yeah, and then yeah, there's a bunch of her, her pictures. I love Cino. I would have been. Shot, a, I would. Whoever's in that shot's ruin it. <laughs> I was about to say there's I would have been in that background. circle. I would have been in that in the Anako ring. I love Cino. <laughs> so here's my thing though, right? People are taking pictures, but she's surrounded. So in the backdrop, there's gonna be people taking pictures. <laughs> so I don't know how that works. Look at this. You definitely show them that for sure. It's SpongeBob. That's Look. crazy. <laughs> Low key, that picture would have been better if she took it on the Empire State Building. Sniper's Nest. This looks. It's kind of ridiculous. That's crazy. Imagine being like that level of, of like cosplay of cosplay fame. She made it. That's like you have it. But listen, cosplayers, if I don't care how many followers you got, you haven't made it until you got the Anako <laughs> ring. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like her work. Yeah, you should probably uh, shout her out real quick. She deserves it. What's her name? I don't know. Anako? Anako? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'll yeah, we'll put it up. We'll put yeah. it up. Um, Interesting. That's yeah. so funny. The Anako ring. <laughs> Crazy. That's like phenomenon of the decade. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that was posted... Uh, January 2nd, 2020. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but I don't know when the event happened. But, you know what? Mm. Instead of the phenomenon of the decade, you know what I want to know? What's up? The anime, of the, the anime of the decade. Though. I don't know why that sounded weird. No, you got it. The anime of the decade. So, we have one last news article that will kind of go into the topic. And that's Funimation's Oh my god, these people are going to be raving about this. Um, people got super angry at this shit, at the result of this. But Funimation's Anime of the Decade Awards. We're going to talk about that right now, right here. And even give you maybe our Anime of the Decade <laughs> and Anime of the Year. So, without further ado, let's go into the results. And, T-Rod, you, um, you looked at this, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, he went in blind. Yeah, I went in blind. Like a champ. Um, so favorite shonen series of the decade, My Hero Academia. Oh, baby. So good. Really? Yeah. What's, what's the nominees? Anything or no? Uh, we have runner ups. Okay. Which I assume were the nominees, I guess. Yeah, probably. And the runner ups were Attack on Titan. Mm. Demon Slayer. Mm. Hunter Hunter. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and JoJo's Bizarre's Adventure. You think I it well, well fit? Here's my thing for for me when I was trying to judge my decade or my anime of the decade. A big thing for me was is it complete? Mm-hmm. And I I just feel weird Damn. giving an award that's not to an, to a show that's not complete. And it feels weird to me personally. That's fair. But on that list, that's a tough list. I mean, it's hard to say because, like, yeah. wait, is Demon Slayer complete? No. You said it's not, right? No. Are any of these complete? Attack on Titan's still not Attack complete. Attack on Titan. I think uh, uh, mm-hmm. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter Hunter and JoJo's are. JoJo's. I mean, they still, still keep making stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they keep making stuff. Give it to Hunter Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, no, they, but, they no my, hero, my hero's got me hyped, though. Yeah. It, the thing is, it's got so much potential to, like, like whenever it does reach its end game for some reason or somehow, and like they do a a uh, My Hero Academia Shippuden, and <laughs> imagine like and everyone is just fucking and they have babies. They're, they're in that point in the anime where they're about to. It feels like make a Shippuden version, but that'd be crazy. That I couldn't even imagine that. But it, no, the My Hero Academia has. Um, I mean, it's regarded as like a lot of people's like they compare it to a lot to the big three, I guess. Yeah, I even know what the big three is. A lot of people just change the big three up. I assume Naruto is in it. Yeah, Naruto, DBZ, and like I don't know, there's a whole bunch because there's like yeah. there's like One Piece and Bleach, Bleach, and all that. But 
but they're comparing that like when it first came out they were like oh this is the new show to like to stay and be the new shonen and there's always like the memes of like Goku handing the torch to him or some shit like that I don't know yeah um it is a good show though it is one of those shows I I I didn't watch until like three years later I'll be honest with you yeah and I kept telling you to watch it and I was like it gets the hype it deserves and for now sure. I'm just cosplaying Midoriya and yeah. I'm obsessed with it but the reason why I didn't really get into it too much is well I'll be honest with you the first season it was whatever to me the first season was like whatever until like the last episode where the animation got crazy and like the epicness kind of went a little bit up with like All Might mm-hmm. and all that. But the reason why I didn't watch it was because One Punch Man season one was just came out and it just finished and that was super good. And it was like for some reason I went into My Hero Academia with like I don't want to watch any more like superhero stuff <laughs> that isn't One Punch Man mm-hmm. from Japan. Yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? One Punch Man was funny too, though. Yeah, One Punch Man was just had yeah. that that special. That it, think about how big One Punch Man was when like <laughs> yeah when it um came out memes everywhere. One Punch Man workout. This yeah. people people that didn't watch anime knew about One Punch Man. I just remember seeing the One Punch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ding 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 ding. One Punch. That's great animation. Yeah. But that's that. Do you agree with that? It's Do fair. I agree? I, don't, no. I mean, I'll, you don't specifically from your rules. <laughs> uh, yeah, from my rules. No. But do you think it's like a fair? I think it's acceptable. Yeah, fair contender. Sidebar: I know Watch Mojo gave it to Hunter X Hunter. Really? Yeah. Spoilers if you watch that video. Don't even watch it. It anymore. deserves it. Hunter X Hunter deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. He, you watched it? Oh yeah, I watched. I watched a little bit. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna lie, but um, I got to the part where um, I would say it's it's like it's there's like this human monster war, mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna leave it at that. And that, that that arc is really really good, and it t- it taught me a lot. That's all I gotta say. Okay, all right. Teaching teaching new lessons. Oh, right. Those are the best when shows teach a lesson. So favorite shojo series of the decade, Fruits Basket 2019. Fruits like Basket a remake. It's a uh, I don't even know. I, I assume it's like a, a retelling of it with like new animation and everything. Never watched it. Um, it is. It is. Yeah. 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 Um. So you yeah you said you watched it and you said it was pretty damn good. Yeah. It's it's really good. Uh, I haven't seen um, the runners up, which are now. If you don't know like shoujo, what that means, especially you watching, targeted towards girls. Mm-hmm. That's like pretty much what it is. The runner ups. I forgot to say it. Banana Fish, Orange, Madoka Magica, and Yona of the Dawn. Yeah, I haven't seen um, Banana Fish, but I hear it's like a, it's an action romance, um, and it's supposedly really good. Um, the characters deal with their internal struggles, but haven't watched, haven't got to it. Uh, Orange, my girlfriend's watched. She said she really likes it. It's a really good one. Not a lot of people do. And I think that's why Fruits Basket got it, even though it came out just this year. Interesting. Like, just the, the new anime. But episode seven of Fruits Basket. <laughs> the oddly specific. Oh, that episode will change your hard. mind about Fruits Basket if you don't like it up until that one. Mm. It hit home. It hit it's home. like the episode, like, 13 of Steins Gate. <laughs> episode eight, Gerd. Episode eight. Look at those weebs. Mop Psycho. <laughs> like... Like eleven minutes in, like framed, <laughs> ten thousand. So what? What makes an anime for girls? Just like I don't know. Wait, what does that even mean? Uh, banana fish is definitely. It's an anime all propaganda. For girls. <laughs> it's like don't fall for the propaganda. Of, it's a bunch of uh, guy fan service. Banana oh, okay. Fish, so I, I I assume it's like just usually like female characters or like the main character is a female type thing. Anime is anime. Anime is anime. Anyways, favorite sports series of the decade. High Q. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> runner, up, runner up is free. Kuroko's Basketball, Megalobox, and Yuri on Ice. Damn, that is a good catalog. Mm-hmm. That is a great catalog. I take it back. <laughs> take it all back. I don't know. That's hard. Um, I... 
I mean, to be honest, um, I love Yuri on Ice. That is one of my favorite shows ever. It's a good um, show. And uh, I guess, wait, what was on the list again? Yeah, can I see? The, can, you, can I see the list? <laughs> yeah, I got you. But um, the way that people I don't want to see talk, the other ones. <laughs> the way that people talk about Haikyuu is like is nuts. Like I remember the craze and the, like how hype people got from Haikyuu, specifically like talking about sports anime. Mm-hmm. People talk about Haikyuu. When you talk about sports anime, you talk about Haikyuu. Yes. People get hype about the moments of it. I've seen not clips, but like I don't know. There's like I saw like the other day. It was just like nothing will beat this moment, and it was like Haikyuu. And it was like three boys and they're hugging and they're crying, and I'm like, this looks epic as shit. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even know what like <laughs> happened to lead to that point to that frame, but I bet you it is loaded with a whole bunch of depth and and uh, hype. Yeah. So uh, my friend actually watched it. Shout out you, Lorenzo, and he was raving about it. And I was like, I, I didn't know what to think, and I kind of waited like a while. Wait, Lorenzo got you into it? Well, he didn't get me into it. He he just told me he watched it all, and he uh-huh. said he really liked it. Mm-hmm. I remember one day you said you watched the first episode, and you said that it was really good, but like you didn't you didn't watch more or whatever. Yeah, I just didn't continue. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll try it. <laughs> I watched one episode, and literally for like the next three days, I binged the entire like all every season, and like I don't know, is there a movie? Probably not. I don't remember. But I watched like everything Haikyuu related, and I and I caught up, and I said, "Wow, <laughs> what an anime!" <laughs> it made me want to want to go play volleyball. Anime, am I right? It was good. It was you really watch, really good. You take that one breadcrumb, and then boom, you freaking pull the string, and the box falls on you, and yeah. you're just a, a wee bass rabbit. I did not chewing ex- on your anime carrot. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect to watch like the whole thing at least in three <clears throat> days. You know what I mean? It's three like, days? It's like a lot of episodes. I, I think it was three days. It was a while ago. I Damn. watched all of it. All of it. I wish I had that much free time. It was good. It was yeah. during high school? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't remember. No, high school? What's crazy is that like in high school. I tried. Uh, you know, like there's a stigma, you know, the jocks and you got the nerds. And like if you were to tell those jocks, hey, watch anime, what, what sports anime would you show them? It'd probably be Haiku, probably be Kirko is No Basket. I mean, I've seen that one personally. I can't think of any, Megalobox like... Megalobox was definitely... I'm not into... I liked Megalobox a lot. Yeah. yeah, I heard you and... Was it you and Logan? Yeah. Like, raving about that? I didn't get into it. I just saw a lot of, like, sweaty steam punches. The thing was, <laughs> I, I really liked the... Uh, That's the show. <laughs> I liked the atmosphere of the show. Uh, it was yeah. very old-school feeling and, like, hip-hop to it a little bit. The one... Yeah, the one thing I could give to, like, Megalobox is, like... The animation style looks awesome. Yeah, it was. It felt Dark like I was style. watching an old school show, so it was cool. Mm. I really liked the uh, the soundtrack and stuff. But anyways, Haikyuu, favorite sports series of the decade. Favorite <laughs> sci-fi san- fantasy. Favorite sci-fi fantasy series of the decade. What do you think it is? Uh, Steins Gate. Steins Gate is the winner of sci-fi fantasy. The runner-up was Attack on Titan, Doctor Stone, Psychopaths. Sora Online. Fucking Steins Gate. I could have a whole podcast episode about that. About yeah. how fucking good that show is. I always say... I always say that Steins Gate... Sto- uh, like, storytelling... Is... Big boy. Abo- it's, it's above... It's above um, anime itself. I always say that it is just one of the best things I've watched in general. Not even just to the anime filter like to movies to everything it is such a well-written show with like cool like time mechanics and like using real life like instance instances and stuff like that and like from shit that happened like during like i think 9 11 there was like uh because uh what's the dude's name john teeter yeah john teeter um because i think the thing was is like john teeter was like a dude during that time before 9-11 apparently I think he like called 9-11 or something like that That's so crazy it's something like that gives me chills it's and, so he like, weird. and he like tried to and he, he claimed to be from the future and it turned out it was all fake but but 
She didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Not you didn't Steinsgate. watch Steinsgate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Steinsgate is a damn good show. It is. It's written really well. Big brain, two hundred IQ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Easily. If you watched it, that just stick that, stick through the beginning. What, that's what, what you got there. <laughs> oh, I got Kirisu. <laughs> Waifu. Kirisu. Christina. Most useful oh, female. Kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, if you plan to watch it and the beginning is like rough or whatever, you're not feeling it, just just watch it. Trust. Mm-hmm. It gets a lot, a lot better. I mean, unless you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steins Gate is just so. It's it's just so good. Watch it. Just watch it. Yeah, but those runners up though. The, the what? The runner those runners up, up though. Let's talk about them. I forgot about the runner up. Let's talk about them. <laughs> yeah, Attack on Titan. Come um, on. You um. You talked to, I mean, you watched Dr. Stone, not talked well, about I watched it. everything that's on um, that. On that. <laughs> to me, Psycho Pass, um, when I went to go meet with my uh, anime friends, um, we did like kind of like a ring around the rosy type thing. I don't even know if that fuck that means, but <laughs> it was one of those things where it's like we all sat down on a table and uh, uh, good friend Kevin Miner, he um, was just like, let's just talk about anime. And he was just like, favorite this, go, go, go. Favorite this go and pretty much it went down to favorite villain and almost unanimously mm. it was uh, Nakashima, I think it was his name. I didn't watch the show. I watched like three, four episodes. I should finish it. I was like, I, for, I forgot I'm, his I'm name. Not, I can't remember his name. I know he has white hair. <laughs> it's something Shima. I don't know. The pressure of the podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was like literally like, um, like just unanimously it was like boom, boom, boom. It was the villain from Psycho Pass. And I was like, yeah, I give it that. Damn. I got to watch it now. Hmm. Like, li- like literally, it. This was, there was like, like, I want to say. A lot of people say Dio too. <laughs> Dio? Watch JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> With the freaking cherry. But yeah, literally it was like six plus people and literally unanimously it was like, boom, 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 boom. Wow. He is, yeah, no. he is a genius. And like, yeah. not only that, he's like, he's almost like the Thanos the Thanos of like anime in terms of like, you know, I kind of feel him. Like I get why he has the motivations he has and he, he's super backed up by how he feels. And it, it, he's a genius. He's so good. Yo, Psycho Pass is the show that I told somebody uh, to go watch if, when they, to get back into anime because they told me anime is for little kids. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh really? Go watch my, uh, <laughs> Psycho Pass. Also, I want to give a shout out to Steins Gate, uh, you know, the opening. <laughs> oh, Hacking to the Gate? Yeah. yeah. So good. Yeah, oh, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah, so good. You want to talk about uh, yeah. Sword Art or you're over that? <laughs> um, Sword Art was just a revolutionary anime for the isekai genre in general. So, I mean, I see why it's on there. A lot of people love it. Is it the best story ever? No. Could have been? Yes. I, I well, actually. There's four seasons for a reason. Hmm. It definitely started getting us into anime, yes. especially yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was your show. Mm-hmm. I, w- I want to, so I want to give a shout out to Sword Art Online because I think based on, I could be wrong about this, but based on my own like, um, observations, it was like it looked like Sword Art Online was the one, sh- the one show. No matter, and I am famously, famously known for hating Sword Art Online, loving the character designs, but hating Sword Art Online. Um. But I do want to give a shout out to it because based on my observations, it looked like Sword Art Online was the one to kind of give the renaissance of anime back in America again. Mm -hmm. It looked like that was like the only show showing on like Toonami as like a, hey, let's see how this works. It blew up after that Attack on Titan came out, extremely blew up. And now we have shows that are, I don't know, have have you seen the latest like Toonami lineups? No, it looks it, fake. I probably have. It looks fake. Okay. What do you mean? Just like all these shows that should not be on there because yeah. they're so like oh, yeah, yeah. out there. It's literally like Fire Force, My Hero Academia, like how to pick up girls in a dungeon, like oh, like no. <laughs> like like a whole group of shows that I would have never thought would be yeah, airing yeah. on That's Tsunami. Anime, anime. Yeah, it is. It is. It's not DBZ Sailor mm-hmm. Moon and Yuasha yeah. anymore. Yeah, Naruto. And I and I. I could be wrong, but I pin it back to Sword Art Online. Yeah? Hmm. I really do. How about Attack on Titan? Like, Attack on Titan, like, it came after that. Oh, okay. But, like, Sword Art Online was, like, the first, like, 
Or I think that was 2005. For lack of a, I mean, no no pun intended, but it was like kind of like the beta Bro, test. We were still in high yeah. For Toonami. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching it and I was like, <clears throat> anime? We're literally, we're literally like up one, two in the morning. I remember so that. Pop that on. But anyways, let's keep it moving with favorite isekai series of the decade. T-Rod's probably hyped about this. Konosuba's God's Blessing on This Wonderful World. <laughs> So each guy is just uh, characters in a world. They go to a, a different world. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. Yes. Yeah, they they get some specific powers and whatever. Yeah, some way somehow. I mean, Konosuba. Is this like your favorite show? Like, what's good? I mean, Konosuba is probably one of the funniest shows I've ever, uh, funniest animes I've ever yeah. watched. Um, because I, I, I went mean, and watched the movie. Yeah. That made me cry on the <laughs> kitchen floor <laughs> laughing. If you've seen it, the part where. You mean Megumin's parents dying laughing? Um, I've got to wa- I've got to watch this show. <laughs> yeah, that sounds funny. There's Megumin. only one show that made so me laugh like in that. In the anime community, uh, anime community, Megumin is like waifu, hands down, <laughs> to everybody. To you? To everybody. To you? If there was a genre, who's your, for, who's your waifu of uh, oh, the decade? <laughs> Who? Maxi Cruz. No, no, I meant of Konosuba. Oh, Konosuba. If you were to choose one. I know there's like darkness and aqua. Yeah, make me. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. No, that's fair. Life with the Literally, decade. Our first con, we that's saw a, a Megumin cosplay, Logan and I, <laughs> and we were like, explosion for a reason. <laughs> Are the runner ups? Uh, the runner ups were Overlord, Ray Zero, starting Life in Another World, The Rising of the Shield Hero, and Sword Art Online. Oh. Now, I want to give a shout out to. Um, because there was a bunch of isekais out, mm-hmm. right? You had, like, yeah. your Grimgars and... Uh, was Grimgar one? Because uh, they compared I it to Sword Art. I haven't seen that. Um, I'm going to put Grimgar. If you've watched it and it's isekai, put it in the comments below. <laughs> um, so, yeah, pretty much... Um, I want to give a shout-out to Ray Zero because I feel like... And again, this is, I could be wrong, but based on my observation, it looked like isekai literally quadrupled in shows right after Ray Zero popped up. Hmm. Like, literally quadrupled. It was like everything was just isekai, 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 isekai. Yeah. And I was like, stop. I don't want to watch any of this. It took a while after Sword Art for yeah. the genre to get good. Mm-hmm. But Sword Art was it, but Ray Zero is when it literally like have you became seen, top tier. Have you seen Ray Zero? Yeah. I've seen all of it, and it's better than Konosuba. Hands down. I heard, yeah, mm. I mean, I heard Ray Zero is amazing. It is. And I haven't watched it. Um, Again, one, one of my anime friends um, uh, was like, you have to watch this. And I'm like, why haven't you watched this? It was like that and like, uh, Rascal. It's not a dream of uh, Bunny Girl, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. My, whatever, mm-hmm. Bunny Girl, girl. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but he told me to watch that because that was amazing too. But, it really is. It's, it's on... Written wise, it's on par with Steins Gate, like mentally. Like it looks like it. It looks like it gets extremely dark. Mm-hmm. I fucking remember um the Amelia memes where it's just like I love Amelia. <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> and then there's like two two of the pair of maids and then everyone's like Rem mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Rem though. <laughs> What's up with the uh, Shield Hero? You guys were freaking hero. out about that, weren't you? Uh Shield Hero was Is Shield Hero with the squirrel girl? Raf uh, Raftalia? Yeah. Is she a squirrel? I don't know. I, she looks like a fucking squirrel to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's a she's a um she's half animal of some sort. Well, but she's in she's terrible. in there, right? I feel terrible yeah. not knowing what she is, but she is half animal. <clears throat> but that was uh that was an anime me and my girlfriend watched together, and it it was one of those bond animes that we could literally just sit down, veg out, and love what the characters were doing. And I know there's a lot of controversy with it. Just really? Watch, just watch the show. Yeah. Interesting. But you know what's controversial? Spoilers, because <laughs> you're a lion April. <laughs> that favorite romance series of the decade. The decade. Romance series. Of the decade. Of the decade. We talked about it earlier. Runner-ups <laughs> were Fruit Basket, Fruits Basket, Kaguya-sama, Love is War, so that's like the girl, the chica mm-hmm. dance. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, here we go. Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. <laughs> and Snow White with the red hair, which your girlfriend loves, I believe. I remember talking to her about it. Of course she does. 
<laughs> um, so I haven't watched it. You guys have watched it. How do you feel about that result? I am happy. That show. Uh, I you get, got pretty like, for lack of a better term, you got pretty obsessed with it. You're like, damn, this is fire. Yeah, because all right, this might sound familiar. It's about a dude. He's very passionate in what he does. He falls out of it. He doesn't want to do it anymore. He meets a girl. She pulls him back into that world of what he loves to do. He does it again. Sound familiar? A little bit. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I didn't even hear anything you said. I zoned out so bad. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I think about it so much. No, your line, April, was so good because of not only the animation, the characters, but the music was phenomenal as well. And the animation. Yeah. Especially on the, the yeah. last scene. My God. My God. Looked like Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> I don't. But anyways, you know what I do know? The favorite animation of the decade, which was Demon Slayer, Kometsu no Yaiba. Hmm. People were pissed. <laughs> pissed about this. <laughs> I don't know if you know. People, so many people were just like, there's. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just one episode and Ninja tweeting about it. <laughs> That's literally why I got it. Really? Yes. But either or. What, no, what, what's no, the word again? Let me praise it first. Favorite though. animation of the decade. Favorite animation of the decade. I assume it's referring to like, like the anim, like the actual animating yeah. of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me praise it first because like the studio is a nonprofit studio and they. Really? They don't go. They don't go over budget. Uh, they might, but they literally spend their whole budget on the show, and you gotta appreciate it. Yeah. You gotta watch it for that case. Nice. But is it a really good show? Hell fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the one episode I'm talking about, the best animation I've ever seen. Really? Is it yes. the one where he's like rolling around? No, it's uh. I saw a clip of that. And I was like, it's Demon Slayer. It's Demon Slayer. Yeah, Demon Slayer. Wow. There's a yeah, I remember I saw a clip like where he like got hit like really hard and I was like, damn, this animation's really good. I think that was like the first <clears throat> episode too. He like is the main character, he gets hit, but he gets hit at such a high like force that he's like forced back, but because of the speed he's going at, he like bounces off the ground and because of how fast he's going, he like stands back up, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like he's going that yeah, fast and he's that like- his feet are dragging against the ground. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, it, it looked like a motorcycle crash, where, like, um, he's going so fast, falls off the bike, but because of the momentum, he was able to stand back up again. So, pretty much, they animated that, and it looked super, like, realistic. It was really cool. So, there's... The, okay. This is a different episode than the, the one that's, like, really well animated, but there's this demon that has, like, telekinesis, and she's making the main character... Uh, or he's making the main character uh, fly around like a rag doll, and the main character's name is Tanjiro. Um, and it's so hard to animate something like this because you're having arrows in the air following somebody falling, who's also doing an animation of like a sword move to stop his inertia from going a certain direction. But like praise to that episode as well. I'm gonna give a shout out to that Levi scene. That is my. That I saw that. I was like, "This is the greatest animation I've ever seen." Ever. Yeah. The, well, the one of the runner-ups because is Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. Yeah. Oh, that's why they're mad. Yes. So the runner-ups were Attack on Titan, Mob Psycho 100, One Punch Man, and Violet Evergarden. That's why people are mad. Yes. Those that, are good animations. Yes. Like, they're I, very different too. Yeah. Which is the problem with this. It's hard to judge. Genre. Yeah. It's, hard it's very judge. hard to judge because I'll never, I'll never forget episode one, One Punch Man. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that too. Nothing like, <sighs> like what is this? It? Yeah, it was at the time where people were like, "Are you, like, how how much money did you spend on this?" <laughs> and literally, it was just like, I remember the article, like the company, like director or whatever, was like, "We didn't, we spent the normal amount of money." It was these people are just good. They're too good. Yeah, imagine if they didn't get paid. That's what I was saying. I'm like, if they didn't get paid, oh. Good vibes. We ain't talking about mm-hmm. that. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, the only congr- one I haven't seen was Violet Evergarden. So 
I'll definitely check it out because Violet Evergarden looks I hear good amazing. things. I hear good things. Got a lot of like anime of the year like nominations slash awards. So congratulations, Demon Slayer. You win this round. <laughs> uh, this, year. <laughs> this year. See what, you next decade? see you next decade. Well, that was decade? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. See you next decade. It just came out. Exactly. It's not even finished, apparently. <laughs> no, that's that's another thing. It's, people have the same rule you have. I gotta have a finished mm-hmm. anime. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess for, for that, I wouldn't really care. Just for animation. Mm-hmm. That's kind of unfair because, you know, it's technology is to get better over time. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is true. All right, whatever. But anyways, favorite companion creator of the decade. That's what it says. What? That doesn't sound right. Uh, creature. Yeah, it's miss. It's a typo. That was a Panda typo. Creature, yeah. Damn. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. Favorite companion creature of the decade. Happy from Fairy Tale. Happy. Uh, yeah, yeah. From Fairy Tale, the blue yeah. cat. Yeah. No. No. People why? are pissed about this. Too. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know why? Because um, merch. Merch is why. But anyway, uh, I've literally seen Happy. Everywhere, every kind of go to Happy's just a merch backpack or something, and you know, fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> so, fairy tale is a long show. I mean, a lot, a lot of people fell in love with it. My girlfriend loves it. Well, um, she's obsessed with fairy tale. Yes. Mm. So I'm pretty sure she would say, yeah. But I'd give it to one of the runner ups. So the runner ups were. Chopper from One Piece, Dimple from Mob Psycho 100, Hawk from The Seven Deadly Sins, and Pikachu from Pokemon. <laughs> Pikachu Come on. from Pokemon. So The most iconic <laughs> companion. I mean, I think that even if you don't agree, it just wins. I think. It just... It's iconic. That's Exodia. Yeah. <laughs> Pikachu is Exodia of the creature <laughs> companion category. Yeah, he there's wins. no way. He wins all. Yeah. That's well, it. I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad. Yeah, it should be Pikachu. That's it. Don't argue. Yeah, no, the people are also hypocrites because they don't consider Pokemon an anime as well. It's an animated thing exactly. from Japan. It's exactly. anime. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, it also is before this decade, too. It came out, like, 1995 or whatever. I, I, Pikachu's my favorite companion creature, obviously. <laughs> It's just too iconic. So congratulations, Pikachu, for winning (laughs) Companion Creature of the Decade. So the favorite original series of the decade, favorite original series of the decade. I saw some people kind of mad, but a lot of people were like, hell yeah. And I am hell yeah about this because fucking kill the kill. Favorite original anime of the decade. Don't lose your way. (laughs) I fucking love Kill a Kill. Kill a Kill is my favorite show. Like, it's my number one show. I love Kill a Kill. As you can tell by these mugs that I'm double fisting. <laughs> <laughs> what a good show. Oh my god. You haven't watched it yet, right? Me? Yeah. I watched like... A little bit of it, right? Ten episodes? Really? Something? That's a lot. I might be lying. I'll tell you. I've watched sec. that show front to back, back to front, Japanese... English, I have figures. That's when you know something's a good anime. When you can watch it in Japanese and English, be like, those are both good. Yeah. And that's what people feel about uh, Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. <laughs> you know how many episodes I've watched? How many episodes have you watched? <laughs> I've watched four. <laughs> 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 but listen, what I've seen was good. I definitely want to watch more. It just, you know, life. I was like, you can attest to this. The amount of times I've played episode three. Yeah. Episode three is so good. And that's the fight. The fight between Ryuko and Satsuki. Oh my it god! It is a sick show, for sure. Oh, same director of Promare too. So because of the transitive property, go watch Kill Kill if you've watched Promare, and vice versa. Guren, Guren's in the mix too, but we don't talk about that. Runner up, runner up. <laughs> runner ups were Death Parade, Psychopaths, Madoka Magica, and Yuri on Ice. Now, category again. Uh. Favorite original series. Favorite original yeah. series. So I'd consider Mob uh, Psycho Pass as a sci-fi fantasy, honestly. Even though it's like future. It's so cops, it's so hard because Psycho Pass was such a original series in terms of like the plot. 
of like okay. the cloudy psychopaths and all that, mm-hmm. and like Sybil, the Sybil system or whatever. Yeah. Um, a lot of people wanted Madoka Magica. I don't wholeheartedly agree with that, just because like, um, animation. I, the show it's be animation. Well, the animation is really good, but it's it's the I, we've kind of seen what Madoka Magica kind of did with like Card Captor Sakura. Where it's like this cutesy show that's super mature and like super mm-hmm. scary, um, and honestly, my personal runner-up would probably be probably be Yuri on Ice, if not Psychopaths, because Yuri on Ice was just like, I think it was the first like, it was such a movement when they came out. You know yeah, what I mean? Winning a shit ton of awards. It, no. and I'm still waiting for like season two in the movie. Yeah, which they like announced like years ago. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> He's still skating to this day. <laughs> I don't know, but original. I'm hype. I'm hype about Kill a Kill. Um, I mean, when we talk about original, right? What like what does that necessarily? Yeah, what does that, mean? What does that mean? Does that mean like completely unique? And it has to be this decade too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I were, I guess, if I were to like back up the Kill a Kill choice. Um, the animation and the humor and everything is super unique to like, uh, specifically like the director and like how he d- how he does things. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's hard because it's so. What I like about Kill a Kill is that it feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie where it has mm-hmm. so many like references to older anime, like a shit ton. Mm-hmm. If you actually go through, like the rabbit hole, um. And not only that, there's, like, the plot of it with, like, the plot that, like, of, like, clothes and yeah. how that's, like, how that represents, like, a fascist government. Yeah. So, literally, like, if you're, like, a one-star type uniform, you're just, like, in the slums versus, like, if you're a three-star or, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're living, like, wealthy. It's such a weird idea. And then to have the main character come in trying to find who killed her dad and like you know what you know what's like clothes weaknesses scissors and let's give her a scissor blade you know what I mean yeah it's so weird it's really weird that is definitely original for sure and then like let's make fan service the forefront on purpose ironically to kind of like parody that I don't know it's such a weird mesh of ideas and that's I, I guess that's the only way I could like back it up but I'm biased because I love Kill Kill and I love Satsuki. So, any qualms? Nope. No, sir. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I will not argue with someone who's so passionate. <laughs> Good because favorite anime film of the decade. <laughs> Your name. One favorite anime film of the decade. The runner up, Asylum Voice, Dragon Ball Super Broly. My Hero Academia, Two Heroes, and Pro Mare. You know what? Hey, listen. I agree, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Pro Mare just, just fire. No, no, no. Go. All right, as like a, a whole movie type of thing, like I'm talking the, the whole package, like the music, the animation, the character, the design, the message. I mean, not really the best message to compare to the silent voice. But it had, like, all those things which just makes a great movie to show someone that doesn't watch anime. If they watch it, they'll they'll just, they'll be, like, astounded by what they're seeing and hearing, you know what I mean? And it definitely gives that feeling of, like, that that wow. Like, what did I just watch when the credits roll? And you just feel these emotions, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a really good movie. Yeah, I mean, per- personally, I love a silent, I mean, the two are compared. A silent voice, your name. Who's better? Fight. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um okay. personally I think a silent voice, I love a silent voice way better than and there's a lot of people that feel this way too. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Um, over your name. I feel like your name does something so good in the way that like it it does everything that a good anime movie should do and kind of brings it to the forefront while like a silent voice is does little minute things that may that like you you almost can't notice it if that makes sense 
Yeah. So the animation and the story are great, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest things that, like, that a lot of people don't realize is the sound design. A movie that's literally called The Shape of Sound. Yeah. If translated. Um, Like the muted piano keys and stuff. Yeah, the muted piano keys when it's, like, on Shoko and all that. And just, like, little things like that. And even, like, I don't want to spoil it, but, like, that ending scene. How powerful. 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 Jesus. I just got chills talking about it. Um, Hmm. Easily the the best message out of all those movies is that one, for sure. But the sound sound design, like, like, everything that they do from the beginning all the way to the very, very last scene. It's for that. It's for that scene. I remember watching that. I was like, I couldn't breathe. I was like... Choked up. Yeah, I was like, dude, I'm getting my my. Yeah, I'm getting choked up right now. I'm like, my chest is like tight talking about it. It is so good. Um, yeah, watch. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, the reason why I give it to your name. Let me get this straight. Promare is my favorite out of so all. So you those. agree with your name? Yes, yeah, I agree. But Promare is my favorite out of all those. But the reason I, I'm like going the more like Academy route, you know? Yeah. If there was like the big grand movie that has everything. It's probably your name. Like the like, it's incredible the animation and stuff. I give Silent Voice definitely the best message what they're trying to do and say. Definitely the best. And then Promare, obviously. Look, I haven't seen Promare yet. Promare. Promare. Promare yet, but um, your name is uh definitely really good for me. We saw it in theaters. Like Kevin dragged me to the theaters to see that. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> he dragged everyone. He dragged everyone to your, see that. Well, your name. Yeah, yeah, your name. I I literally. I am surprised that, like, Funimation hasn't, like, sent me my check. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or hired me or something for anything as PR, whatever. Um, because I literally got, I want to say, 20 butts. 20 and butts in seats. In seats, watching this movie, and, like, five of them being me. Seth doesn't even watch anime, dog. I got a, I got a person <laughs> that literally, like, thinks anime is for, like, children. <laughs> And it's for kids, and I got him in that seat, and and you know what he said when we said, "Oh, what did you think of this?" Yeah, it was, it was it was all right. That's what I'm talking about. But though. That's, that's that's why I said earlier. But you could tell that was like a reluctant, like, "Ah, oh, I shouldn't like this." Yeah, but I did. I'm telling you, that's why I think it should win. It's that movie. You show someone that it's not in the anime. It's like it has everything. It's just so mm-hmm. so. It's a well produced movie. That being said, your Premier. name doesn't have everything, <laughs> but I'm hoping Promer does. I'm hoping it does because I know what like a whole anime show can give me from a show a specific show that I'm going to talk about later uh, can give you and your name doesn't do it for me but I'm hoping Premiere does and I'm no, pretty sure it does it for him no no action in your name really so, yeah exactly yeah. yeah if you're an action head then that's mm-hmm. a name for you so with, with that, that was actually the last award. So I want to go through everyone right now and just what's your anime of the year, anime of the decade, if you have one. Oh, God. I know it's super hard. So for me, my anime of the year, it really came down to two. Um, it was Carol on Tuesday. Big surprise. But I think what edges it out is Attack on Titan Season 3. Fair? Fair. Attack on Titan Season 3 was just so good it revamped what the series kind of like was trying to do in season one but then again it it was one of those things where it's like season two if you didn't appreciate it it's it made all sense for season three it was the it was the wind up for that and it just was super hype and it is bringing everything to what's the end game of this this journey and it was just amazing how they did it and how they pulled it off. It, nothing felt rushed. Everything felt right. And the animation is unreal. Unreal. Of the decade. No, that's Best animation shit. of the decade. Just Best an- <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my, my anime of the decade, Steins Gate. I thought about it long and hard. And as much as I love Kill a Kill, it's not for everyone. And it does have its flaws. Um, Steins Gate just feels so perfect. The only thing I guess I can knock it for is like the pacing in the beginning Mm -hmm. that sets up the whole thing. But it's one of those things where it's like you, 
you watch the whole thing and you're like, oh, okay, now I, I understand why the beginning is the beginning. And there's little breadcrumbs in the beginning that you don't notice. I love when mm-hmm. things yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And it, like, and I already said, like, it's it transcends anime. It's so good that it could be in any list of any media, books, yeah, movies, music, whatever. It's like, more than anime. It's It's more than anime dance more than anime (laughs) but it is just what i think is close to what a masterpiece should look like feel like and sound like so i feel that yeah i feel that you got you got any oh uh, for for my year yeah so you 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 might be surprised by this because you you think it's carol on tuesday (laughs) I, I thought I thought you did. I watched a, I thought you a shit did. ton of anime this this year. Anyways, well, I, disclaimer: I've only watched two animes, right? <laughs> <laughs> two animes this year. Wow, tough choice. <laughs> but my anime of the year is Attack on Titan Damn. season three, part two point eight. <laughs> over two days, carry the decimal birth by sleep. That is incredible. Attack on Titan. And it just makes so much yeah. sense. Every all the questions that you had get answered. You know what I mean? It's so good, and I believe it leads into the fourth season, final season, like perfectly. And I said this to him. I said that if the fourth season like has this zest that this season did, this could go down as like one of the greatest animes of all time. Of all time um, in history. Of all time. Yeah. To this day, <laughs> that's how I feel. That could. But it's it's kind of unfair though. Hold up. It's oh damn, he's not done yet. <laughs> it's, it's unfair to judge because right, uh, Karen Tuesday is like a new show that just came out, right? And Attack on Titan has this history to it, right? Yeah, it has all this time to build up all these relationships and stuff, so it definitely like, hits harder. So that's why it's kind of unfair. So I'm it's like, like the, it's like the Caterpie butter free. Yeah, exactly. That's why I, I want to give a shout out to Karen Tuesday because it, it kind of got put up against the you know the big boys, the big boy. It was the rookie against the, the legends. Yeah, yeah. But you got a decade now. Yeah, I have a, a top five. You want me to go through a top five real quick? Real quick, because we're yeah, going yeah, really yeah. long. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I, I remember correctly. <laughs> my top five was your line, April. Really? Because it hit. Okay. It, it was, I was. I'm a little biased because it hit me personally. And then uh, it was, the podcast pressure. One sec. It was Steins Gate. Two. As as top okay. as four number four, okay. With Steins Gate because everything you said, okay. Number three, Devil Man Cry Baby. My Shit, goodness, I forgot about Devil Man Cry Baby. God My damn it. My goodness. God damn should, it. Should we talk about it or just go? Um, for real quick, real quick. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. <laughs> on Netflix, go watch it. Boom. No, Devil Man Cry Baby was one of the most surprising anime of the year it was a retelling of what i i actually didn't know anything about the devil man series and i know a lot of people didn't but it was a retelling of what the devil man series was and they did a lot of cool things and modernized it like the original one had like rockers as like one of like the kind of like antagonist type supporting characters type thing um and they changed that to like rappers and like it's one of those shows that I love these type of shows because it was um, it was one of those shows that had like animation that people deemed bad. But if you actually go frame by frame and look at the work, it is one of the top animated shows of all time. Yeah, I remember watching it. It took me a little bit to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it clicks. And it's like, wow, this is really well animated. And it's super depressing yeah. and super deep to what is actually happening right now. Yeah, exactly. And I love the way it ends. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It all comes together and makes sense in the beginning. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Go I, watch Devil Man Cry, baby. I remember you telling me like to watch this show, and I, I just came out of my room, and he told me to watch it. I watched one episode, and I didn't think I would watch more. I s- stayed up all night watching the entire season. <laughs> I watched it twice in a row. If it, if that's not a testament to how good it is, I literally finished the whole series, and r- literally right when the credits of the last episode hit, he comes out of his room. I say, go watch this show. And he puts it on, and I watch it again with him. Literally, back to back. I would would have done the same thing. Anyways. Anyways, next. <laughs> Buddy. Top two. You might be surprised by this, because you'd think it'd be number one, but number two is 
Hold on, hold on. Alexa, pause the video. What's up, everyone? It's Steven here, and what I'm about to say is really, really dumb. Let me explain. So before the podcast, my girlfriend and I thought the anime of the decade was referring to our favorite anime watch during the decade, so that's why I'm about to say what I'm about to say. Anyways, my favorite anime of the decade is officially Devilman Crybaby because it wasn't afraid to take risks, had a good soundtrack, and I just love the overall message. Anyways, if you're enjoying, please subscribe, and Alexa, play the video. It's Gur and log on. Interesting. And, I always thought picked you as a number one. Yeah. And, I, and it, I'm a little biased, too, to put this up higher because uh, it was the show that got me into anime. This was the show that I watched, and I was like, what? Like, anime can do this to me, make me feel these things, and take me on this journey and stuff? And, uh, alright, we'll just move on. Uh, before I go too deep, because that's, like, one of my favorite animes of all time, is that. But number one. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. I, I don't even know I'm ready. Death Note. Really? Is Death that? Note, okay. Death Note, That's yeah. A, that was a, a loop. Threw me for a loop. Exactly. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But you guys know me. When I was watching that uh, that show, it was so so big brain. Like, imagine just writing that show. You, ha you have to have some level of IQ that's just super, super high. Yeah. It's just It's such a, it's a cool show because it's like a, it's a bat battle of wits, right? Yep. It's between two geniuses trying to, trying to outdo each other. You know, I'm all about that, trying to outplay and stuff. It was so cool to see that how, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but everything works out in the end. You know what I mean? A lot of people hate the ending. I love the ending. Yeah, it's yeah. calculated. Come on, it's calculated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a calculated attack. Ah, uh, whatever. But anyways. Yeah, I mean, th that's the same thing. Like, Death Note is literally the same thing with um, with Dr. Stone, one of the animes this season, where you... I don't want to spoil it. But like, <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Some, something happens where you have faith in someone else to, to finish your work, and, and it's calculated in their mind that they're going to finish it and do justice. So... So props. Oh, what do you mean? Let's say Sophia's That's real quick. People don't like it because they didn't think it's realistic. Enough. Sure. Yeah. All right. So shout out to my girlfriend Sophia. Uh, her anime of the year was Care on Tuesday, and her anime of the decade was actually Death Note 2. I was surprised, but mm. anyways. Go ahead. Props, props, props. Yeah. Um, yeah. People don't like an unrealistic situation in their own heads. So, and I thought I thought it was very calculated. Death Note and Doctor Stone. I so. love the calculation. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's too good. Yeah. And 2019 for me, my best anime, that Dr. Stone was one of them. Uh, I, I even watched like Vinland Saga. I know a lot of people love that. It wasn't for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard a lot of people like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I heard the manga was like, incredible, but yeah. Um, jeez. You guys, you know, said Carolina Tuesday. That was one I binged in twelve hours. Both uh, seasons. You're, you're nuts, but um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think what what really did it over the top for me was Mob Psycho season two. It was uh, for anime of the year. Anime of the year, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Season eight was, or episode eight of season <laughs> two, was such season a turning eight? point for me for that anime. What, because it gave me everything that I want in an anime. It gave me character development. It gave me great animation. It gave me an action scene that I didn't think was possible. It gave me um, real-life situations that I could relate to. It gave me hope for what a character can be and teach someone else, you know? Like, it gave me the hard sensei vibes hard like emotion at the end of the episode because it leaves you on a big ass cliffhanger and at the end of the season was the end of the show and it pff, masterpiece masterpiece top three anime all time really top dang three anime all, time. all time how about top of the decade top of the decade <laughs> <laughs> it was between those three it was between Mob Psycho at season two or the finish of it because uh, 
man, that was this year. Animation was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my two favorite anime of all time were Future Diary. Really? Future Diary is my favorite Dang. anime. Well, one of my favorite animes you of all time. Thinking, you think you know someone. <laughs> yeah, right? This, this is guy. revealing. <laughs> this is revealing. You think you know a guy. <laughs> that was one of those um, big-brained animes. Yo, no! I'm outsmart you type <laughs> yeah. stuff, but there was also like the the supernatural version of it mm-hmm. that was addicting. And um, I think the best one for me, though, was obviously Steins Gate. Obviously Steins Gate. Fair choice. <laughs> now, sorry, to, sorry to be a copycat, but now, Ka- now Kayla Mark wanted Sickers. Kayla wanted to. Uh, Who's actually, Kayla? Twenty nineteen. <laughs> we ripped up her contract, but no. Um, did I say that she was sick? I think I, we said, oh, we left yeah. her in twenty nineteen. Yeah. I, don't th- I don't think we said she was sick. Yeah, she was. She, yeah, she's not here because she's sick, and uh, she wanted to say her top anime of the year and decade. So we're gonna call her live. So, get ready. I hope this isn't too loud. Hello? <laughs> um, hello, Kayla Dennis. Um, you're on, uh, uh, Doki Doki Anime Club Episode 2. Okay. We need your anime of the year and your anime of the decade. Hey guys, so the audio that we got here kind of got messed up, like, really bad, so we couldn't use it. We're gonna redo it now. Um, I'm still kind of sick, which is, like, you know, the reason why I wasn't on the podcast, but... I'm going to do my anime of the year and my anime of the decade. Um, so for anime of the year, my choice was Carol and Tuesday, obviously. Um, that's absolutely my favorite show of the year. I loved that show so much. Um, and then for the decade, I actually have two. Um, my first was Steins Gate, which is such an obvious choice um, just because of how much we talked about it. Um, but I love that show so much. And then my second choice was Anohana, um, which is such a beautifully brilliant show. And it's one of the first shows that really made me feel. Um, so those were my picks. Thanks, guys. It's crazy what anime could do to you, man. Yeah, it <laughs> it's is. Crazy. It is. Yeah, that See you later, time. Time. That is a good show. Yeah. I remember I was watching that sophomore year of college. Like, in the library with headphones on, like in the corner, and I'm like trying not to cry, like looking around, like don't look at me. I felt weak. What a great show! Yeah, that's that's one of my girlfriend's top animes too, Anohana. I just rewatched it recently because I I, I kind of trashed on it, but then I was just like, I can't do this. I I gotta see why, like for real. I gotta really critique it, you know, and. Still don't see why. <laughs> <laughs> and it's trash. And, uh, no. and real, no, that's really good. It's really and good. And real quick, you guys, you could write in to danceanimekevin at gmail.com so you could get your, you know, your comments, questions, topics, whatever, talked on the show, just like Kevin Miner did, good friend of mine. Um, he wanted to say that his anime of the decade was the Monogatari series and the anime of the year. Attack on Titan season three, baby! <laughs> Yo, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. That's I such a solid dumb. choice. <laughs> it's such a solid choice. It was so good, and I'm so happy that he felt that way. Because I, when I met him in New York, um, we didn't talk about that, and we should have. Because I would have went off. Yeah, that's a show you, you could go on about. Mm. My goodness, but uh, yeah, that that that's that. Um. I guess normally here we would talk about what other people have wrote in, but the only person that wrote in was Kevin Miner. <laughs> so, write in, guys. So, so write in, danceanimekevin at gmail.com, or if you have Twitter, tweet using hashtag danceanime, and you can get your stuff read on the show like Kevin Miner. Now, he wrote a bunch of questions, and... I don't know. Do you guys want to look through these questions and like see which one you want to answer right now? Should I read them out loud? Um, sure. First question: What anime in 2020 are you most excited for? Attack on Titan. <laughs> Is that coming out 2020? Oh, are we just doing like a, a bullet? Like boom. I mean, if you want to, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go ahead. Okay. There's just one word answers. That's Just, it. Yeah. What anime in 2020 are you most excited for? Attack on Titan, season four. Of course, Attack on Titan, the finale. Probably Demon Slayer. Probably Demon Slayer. Yeah. Okay. 
Favorite OP slash ED of 2019. Oh, don't do this. Don't do this. Um, of oh, 2019? 2019? I thought it was the decade. I was like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Um, fuck. Uh, OP. Um, oh, that's hard. Carol on Tuesday. That's hard. I can't. I, 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 I like the Carol on Tuesday. Definitely. Really? I'm opening of Carol on Tuesday. Ending? I'm a... You ain't getting an answer for me. I've only watched two. It's between... Not hold me now. It's the what's the first one? Kiss me. Uh, that one and yeah, I love that. Fallen Angel. Oh my god. Okay. Anyway, I don't know. I can't. I, I like the opening of no. I I love the opening of Doctor Stone, and I love the opening of season two Fire Force. Those two hit. Dude. Okay. If you could make <laughs> if you could make any live action film into an anime adaptation, which would you do? Death Note. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> imagine. Well, it comes full circle. Um. Any live action film into an anime adaptation, which would you do? Um, any Quentin Tarantino film, honestly. Um, if we could get just like Kill Bill, that's like my favorite movie of all time. The Kill Bill into just a full anime, not just that one sequence. Boom. Go. Mm. If you got one. I got nothing. Mm. Pass. Go. Interstellar. I want it done right. Yo, that would be so good. Yeah. Um, but anyways, what's your anime guilty pleasure? Everyone knows my anime guilty pleasure is High School of the Dead. I love that show. It is so bad, but it's so good. There's a lot of titties and a lot of man abs, too. A lot of man flab, too. <laughs> it's an overweight character in there. But anyways, go. Uh, Nisekoi. They always beat around the bush, stupid, but I really like it. Sorry, let me see. Anime guilty pleasure. Konosuba. Fair enough. If you got oh, Prison School, shout out. <laughs> that show is hilarious. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. yeah if it you is. got, if you guys are up to date on Fire Force or another seasonal anime, I'd love to hear a discussion about it. We don't have time, Kevin Miner. <laughs> <laughs> this is two hours. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you liked what you saw today, go to Patreon.com/slash Dance Anime and throw us a dollar if you can. It would help a whole bunch in what we're trying to do here um, and try to push content as fast as possible and. Yeah, we can build this thing together. Hell um, yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. Again, if you want to get your topics and your comments and your questions read on the show, just like Kevin Miner did, write into DanceAnimeKevin at gmail.com or tweet using hashtag DanceAnime. Um, yeah. And maybe we could do what I really want to do is it would be cool to do a watch party. That would be cool. And like watch one or two episodes. Attack and Titan finale. Oh, that'd be, we're definitely doing a spoiler definitely cast. No, you guys could definitely gotta watch Mob Psycho too. You, I gotta watch a lot yeah. of things. Yeah, Two shows? Too many things. 2019? <laughs> 2020? Let's make it three. Oh, if you guys don't comment in the comment section, you just don't like anime. So. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe on the video. Um, And yeah. can, you guys want to plug in your social medias? Uh, I guess. So on Twitter, you can follow me at Kev Senpai. You can follow our channel's Twitter at Dansu Anime. That's D A N S U because I couldn't get dance anime. Um, we're gonna find that person. We're gonna find. No, I searched it up <laughs> and it was like suspended. Oh wow! That was one of those. What'd they do? Fucked with me. <laughs> 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 no, but anyways, all right. Uh, at Sissendon Swag at Twitter. I know. I want to change it. I can't get the original of Sissendon Swag. is so high school. I'm over it. <laughs> I have no social media. You want my PSN account? Okay. <laughs> if you want electricity done, that's your man. <laughs> or at least low voltage. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, we are talking about the live action casting of Pokemon Sword and Shield. So if you have any celebrities, John Stamos, <laughs> <laughs> anyone, are you related to, um, are you related to, uh, Cameron Diaz <laughs> put her in as a uh, as Melanie you know what I mean <laughs> so it's gonna be a again, good one it's yeah. gonna be a good one it's gonna be really <laughs> good I can't wait so if you have any thoughts on casting your Pokemon Sword and Shield live action movie please write in thank you for watching bye bye now see ya